In this video, I'm going to show you the most useful tool as a shop owner or as a technical expert, basically as soon as you're on the web, but definitely as a Shopify owner, this is going to give you an edge compared to all of your competitors if you know how to work this tool. The tool is called a waterfall, and you've definitely seen it before, but you probably don't know how to use it. Bonjour, bonjour, Shopify world. My name is Andrew from ecomexperts.io and I have the green hoodie on, so we're getting technical today. We're not doing any code today. However, I am going to show you how a waterfall works and I am convinced that a waterfall is one of the most useful tools you can have to look at your own store, but also look at your competitor's store and figure out which apps they're using and how their store actually works. So without further ado, let's jump straight to my screen and show you how a waterfall works. Okay, so I have in front of me three different examples here. The first one is GT metrics. It's a common industry denominator to check the speed of a website. Um, the other one is testmystorespeed.com. That's actually built by us, but it's made specifically for Shopify store. So you get a ton of like Shopify specific information, such as which app you're using. And the third I'm going to show you is just directly on the website itself. So you can find waterfall Falls, for example, in GT metrics, when you go to the waterfall section right here, this is a waterfall. And that's my store speed. You can actually find it right here and you can see it for all your different pages. Uh, if I go up all your different pages, product collection and cart. But if you don't want to do all that, you can also just right click inspect on Chrome and then you're going to go into the um, network no, the yes, the network section. And right here, you're going to have the waterfall. Now, in order to repopulate that waterfall, you refresh and you're going to see the entire waterfall popping up. Besides all this, there's also a couple of app extensions and other things. In other words, what I'm trying to say is you can find waterfalls pretty much anywhere. They're a day to day thing in a network developers toolbox. All right, Andrew. I get that, but what is a waterfall? What am I actually looking at right here? And why is it so useful to me? Well, let me explain that. In order for me to be able to explain why a waterfall is so useful, I need to take one little step back and kind of really quickly explain how a website loads. So when you type in your website URL into your browser, you're making a request to that website to give you all of the files of that website. You see, a website isn't just one page with all of the information already preset. You more have to see it as a collection of little pieces of files that come from everywhere across the web. For example, your pictures might come from your website, your server, but that Instagram feed at the bottom, those pictures from your Instagram, they don't live on your server. Those pictures live on Instagram server, someone else, somewhere else on the web. And your Facebook tracking pixel that tracks your visitor for Facebook ads, well, that tracking pixel doesn't live on your server. The code for that tracking pixel lives on Facebook server. So when you type in a URL, all your browser does is it goes and gets all those files from all those different sources across the web. Each of those files is called a request. And that is why when you load a web page, you're sometimes going to have the mention of how many requests were made. If we go back to the speed report right here, you will see at the top of all of these pages, the number of requests it took to load the page. This means that your browser did in this case, 340 requests for different files in order to build that entire page. Okay. So now that we understand that a website is just not one big file, but more a collection of small little files, waterfalls will make a whole lot of sense. And by the way, if you're like, Andrew, I still don't know how this is going to be giving me an edge over my competition. Wait, we're getting there. I promise you. Okay. Let's go back to the waterfall. So now that we know it's a collection of files instead of one big file, well, then we can see that here are all of those files that got loaded one by one, and also the address from where they got loaded. So here you can see first they ask for the URL and then they started asking for a bunch of pictures from the Shopify server. And as you go down, you see every single file that got loaded in the chronological order that file got loaded. So this was the first file that got loaded and this was the last file that got loaded. 
Now, on this side of the waterfall, so that's the chronological order of all the files, and on this side is a timeline. This is second zero, and this is the final seconds that it took for loading it. So I think here the website got loaded in 3.6 seconds. So this entire journey took 3.6 seconds. So this is second zero, this is second 3.6. And then we can also, with a glance, quickly see how long each, each file took to load. So here we can see that well, the first request was a little bit slow. And then, oh, this one is above average. What is this? This is a US East Amazon AWS. It seems to be an app. Interesting. So if we continue, that's some big pictures right here that they should probably address. And if we click on it, it tells us exactly which picture it is, the, the gift card. But if we keep scrolling, we're going to find elements that are bigger than usual. For example, right here, what is this? And sometimes you will be able to guess if it's an app or an external service based on the URL they're using. Now, in this case, I'm not too sure what it is, but let me give you an example where you can actually figure out which apps they're using with this waterfall. For example, Decathlon is using a lot of mmtro.com. So if Decathlon is your competitor, it might be useful to kind of look up what is mmtro.com. It might be a server service and it's going to lead you nowhere, or it might be an app that they're using aggressively and that's giving them a whole bunch of leads. Who knows? They are also using aimfair.solutions, not too sure what that is. And like that, you can kind of really go into the weeds and see, okay, oh, they're using Gorgeous. We know that's an app for Shopify. That's a CRM app. I actually reviewed that app. So that's pretty interesting that they're using Gorgeous. They're clearly using Amazon ads. And that way you can really analyze your competitor at a whole new level. You can kind of peek behind the curtain. The same thing happens, of course, on uh, GT Metrics. For example, grades.com, it's a shoe brand. And you can go here through the waterfall. Again, these are all the files, and these are the chronological order in which they loaded over time. So you will see it advances towards the end. And then again, you can kind of start looking in here and seeing what each of, oh, here, assets.preview. So they're using preview for email capturing. That's interesting. They have a sign up form from Clavio. So they're using email marketing for Clavio. Also interesting. And that way you can really look at each of your competitors, basically. That's what my video was all about. Another little side note is you can, if this is your website, you can easily identify the problematic files by looking at the big one here. For example, 481 milliseconds versus 27 milliseconds. So, oh, that's Clavio. It's sucking out a bit of juice from my store and making my store slower. Is it worth for me to clip Clavio because I'm using it? Or maybe I uninstalled Clavio by now and it's still sucking out the juice. All right. This is why I believe that waterfalls are one of the most useful features you as a shop owner can know, even if you are not technical. And you know what's even crazier? A lot of applications for devs to work with us, we notice that they can't even read a waterfall. So as a store owner, if you understand a waterfall, you will have an edge compared to the developer that you're currently hiring. Anyway, this was another video where we went a little bit more technical. I have Wednesday strategy videos where we talk about how we can make make you more money. Tuesday app review videos where we look at a cool new app that came across my desk and I kind of review it to see how it can help you. Let me know if those videos are useful and if it was, it would actually make a huge, huge favor to me if you can share this video with a friend. If you're like, oh, he or she is a Shopify store owner as well, she could really use this video. Because if we can get shares, that means that we can get more attention to this channel and that would really, really mean the world to me because I'm spending a whole lot of time making these videos, trying to give all of my Shopify knowledge to you, my subscribers. So thank you very much make sure to share this video with a friend and i'll see you in another one adios